Princess Diana was the most photographed woman in the world. And with all that attention came not only adoration, but intrusion. She famously used the media to her advantage, but soon found lines were often crossed to the detriment of not just her, but her sons, Princes William and Harry. Juliet, Diana was hounded from day one. How do you think she handled the early years of being in the spotlight? Well, I think right from the get-go, she was overwhelmed. We all remember that picture of her with the, you know, the sunshine blowing yeah. through her dress. And, um, you know, it was difficult. She was chased down the street. We, we know that. Um, but quite quickly, she learned how to use that. You know, she learned the power of a photograph. She learned the power of her photograph. You know, a picture of Princess Diana mm -hmm. guaranteed front page in many newspapers across the world. And, and she used that, but she was a little bit dealing with the devil there. And I think that yeah. came, she came a cropper for that. So Deb, why do you think the media loved her so much? I think first and foremost, because we were all obsessed with her. So to put her on the front page meant that that newspaper sold, that people would watch the television. So, you know, it was, it, she was fascinating to us all and we just couldn't get enough of her. You put Diana on the cover of a magazine, it was gone. <laughs> you know, it was, it was an amazing story. And it was not only the fairy tale of the princess, but by, by you know, later in her life, she was the most famous person in the world. And everybody wanted to know everything about her, what she wore, what she was doing, what she ate. You could not get enough. And therefore the media had to deliver it and serve it. To, to those of us in the public who wanted she, to devour it. She also gave a window into the royal family, which had been, it felt like it had been closed. You know, we had the Queen, the Queen Mother, the Duke, and it was very stiff and structured. Mm. But with Diana, it, it was that, the cliche, the, the breath of fresh air. It mm. felt like you were getting a new perspective on the royal family. And for that, I think the royals must have been going, well, what are we dealing with here? She was, a, she was great for the brand, but uh, she, she was almost rogue because she, she could do her own thing. Well, on top, I... top of that, she ticked every box because also for all the fashionistas, you know, everything that she wore and that wardrobe that she, I'm going to say that she, she had and that she used. Yeah. I mean, she said that. She said she used fashion to sort of tell her story as much as anything else. So to your point, the royal insights, the celebrity, she had a lot of celebrity friends, you know, she's at Elton John's party, she's doing all of these sorts of fabulous celebrity things. At the same time, she's probably the most fashionable, best dressed woman in the world too. So many touch points. Mm. Also, I know when I've spoken to photographers from that time, not the paparazzi, this is the, the photographers from the newspapers, they say Diana really knew how to work the camera, you know. She would turn around, she would pose for them, she would do she fun things. She knew her angles. She knew her <laughs> angles. And that was the first time, you know. Normally the royals would be walking straight past, very That's hard it. to get a front-on picture. But every single one of Diana was dynamite. So they had so much material to work with. Now, Mark, you were a very young journo when she came out here. What was your impression? Well, I think in those uh, early days, I think she... she thought she might have been prepared for what she was about to face, but no one could have anticipated what the avalanche of interest that was yeah. in her. Uh, and I think in those early tours, 83, got a lot easier for her, uh, the next tour in 85. Um, and I think she progressed and she became, she got up to speed very, very, very quickly. But I think the early days, it, it was a, a lot for her to handle. It was overwhelming. Deb, looking back, how do you think that Australian media treated her? Look, um, the media is a double-edged sword, as we know, um, and I think that in terms of her privacy, it's, it's really hard. It's hard to sort of say, and we see this all the time with a lot of celebrities, to say, OK, I want my photo taken now, not at this particular time. So I think probably when she was here, the Australian media treated her quite well, but it was a different time. Um, you know, we didn't have social media, we didn't, didn't have, have a smartphones. whole... Exactly. Not everybody was their own paparazzi. So it probably could have got worse had she stayed with us. But um, she used media to manipulate um, her story or to tell her story, and that was her power. But it can come back on you because the media will always be the media and they have their own uh, agenda and their own purpose. Speaking of which, Diana broke new ground by airing her dirty laundry in that 1995 Panorama interview with 23 million Brits tuning in to hear what she had to say. We have chosen not to show any of the clips in the light of what Prince William and Prince Harry have said recently condemning it. Let's listen to what they said. 
It is my view that the deceitful way the interview was obtained substantially influenced what my mother said. The interview was a major contribution to making my parents' relationship worse and has since hurt countless others. It brings indescribable sadness to know that the BBC's failures contributed significantly to her fear, paranoia and isolation that I remember from those final years with her. But what saddens me most is that if the BBC had properly investigated the complaints and concerns first raised in 1995, my mother would have known that she had been deceived. Pretty strong words there, Juliet. Do you think that that interview changed the way the royals interacted with the media? Oh, definitely. I mean, that was the first really intrusive, private, personal interview. Um, and I think it opened the door mm -hmm. to those sorts of questions now being asked of the royal family, you know, private questions, questions about th their own lives, not in front of, you know, not, not as part of the firm, but in their personal lives. And we've seen a lot more of that recently with the boys, of course. They have both spoken about their private lives, Harry especially, in great detail. But I think the expectation of the media was therefore higher now. Yes, absolutely. It's interesting, Shelley, that uh, looking at the, the boys' talk there, and in light of that, there we have the royals who wanted to control the message all the time. And there's Prince Andrew who then comes in and thinks, no, no, I can do this interview, I, I can get on top of this, and it's the, the car, car wreck interview of the year. Absolutely. Of the century. Mm. Uh, For a guy who doesn't sweat, he was certainly sweating. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, her popularity just eclipsed that of her husband. So, Mark, what was it like in the room when the two of them were there? Was the attention all on Diana? I think uh, what I saw, a lot of the attention was on Diana. The, the Crown obviously made a lot of this and the fact that they made so much of it that Charles was actually really, really getting cross and angry about the whole, the whole thing. I don't know whether that was the case because I was never close enough to, with Charles to, yeah. to know what he was thinking. He did say it in one of his speeches. He said, maybe I could split the room or was it... Yeah, do you he, remember made, Juliet? He, made, he made a joke about it, yeah. for sure. Um, and he was aware that, you know, he said, I want to create two of my wives. <laughs> yes. you know, and, and then he could walk down the middle. he could walk down the <laughs> middle. But I don't think there was that, you know, no, ridiculous no, anger or no, anything. No, no, no. Yeah. Come on. Charles, Diana. Mm. I mean, who, who are who people going to go gravi for? gravitate to? The, the, what her secret there was, I think, when she was on tour, she felt and looked accessible to people. Right. Whereas Charles, maybe not so. And that's why people gravitated to her so much. And I have to remember the tours that Charles did before he was with Diana, and he was totally mobbed. We all remember that girl kissing him on the beach. You yes. know, he was such a pin up then. It was a setup. <laughs> was it? Absolute setup. Ooh, interesting. So, Deb, I mean, Frequently, Diana invited the media in, but then sometimes she'd be like, OK, enough, you have to go. That wasn't always respected. It's a fine line, right? It is. And as I said earlier, it's a double-edged sword with the media that, you know, she tried to manipulate the media, but she... You know, the media is still going to have their own agenda. And you can have a mix. When we say the media, you know, mm. we've got the tabloid media in the, the UK, which is, you know, wants a, a, a pretty nasty angle. And then you have Vogue magazine or Harper's Bazaar, on the other hand, shooting yeah. Diana. So you're talking a real range of, of various um, publications. You've got the royal publications that would respect the royals in the middle. But it was her power. And going back to whether or not Charles didn't like the fact that his wife received so much attention, I think the big problem for the royal family was that that attention could not be managed. Absolutely. Um, she was a wild card and they didn't know what she was going to say or do and that was probably more problematic than the amount of attention that she well got. Well said, I agree with that. Mm. Now, Mark, after she died, when she was pursued by paparazzi, do you think there were members of the media who suffered from guilt? Well, I was a member of the media in London at the time and I certainly did not feel guilt oh. um, because to lump the paparazzi as they right. were in Paris with the media, the media is a, huge, is a yeah. huge being. There's a lot of people who do the right thing and I think the paparazzi, I would suggest, that were outside Paris were pretty much on the fringe. There are great freelance photographers. I mean, magazines rely on freelance photographers, good ones who have great contacts. But these, the paparazzi that were in Paris, I think they were fringe dwellers. But yeah. also remember, and this did come out, to blame the paparazzi for Diana's death is a big call 
because the car was being driven by Henri Paul. He was taking prescription drugs, he was drunk, yeah. and he was not wearing a seatbelt, nor did he insist on Dodi Fayad and Diana wear a seatbelt. And he was speeding. The bodyguard who was sitting in the front survived because he was wearing a seatbelt. So I think you've got to be careful about how much the paparazzi did play in her death. Interesting, Juliet. So it was a dangerous game either way. But she also used the uh, media to influence um, her charities and get attention for that way. So do you think the way that she used the media has had an effect the way her sons use the media now? Uh, I think... I think her sons have, have a very difficult relationship mm. with the media. They both grew up being very unhappy about the media intrusion, very unhappy, and I think that that uh, verged to hatred of the media at times. They have had to learn how to work with the media and how to make the media work for them. Um, we know that Prince Harry has separated himself totally yeah. from the normal royal rota that would cover royal events. He handpicks now who he, who he does his media with. But he's handpicking Oprah. He's handpicking <laughs> Oprah. He's also handpicking quite small organisations. He's handpicking Dax mm. Shepherd. Yes. Um, yeah. So he's he's making interesting, different choices. Yeah. Um, I think that it, it is it is something that they have to learn, and and it's a process. And uh, what works for each one of them is very different. We could keep talking for hours, but Good. thank you so much for your time, Mark, Juliet and Deb. If you want more royal news, please visit ninehoney.com.au.